three World Championship final. We just saw SKT hoist the Summoner's Cup. Take a step back and talk about how they did that. That was a 3-0 sweep in the grand final. It was a phenomenal series from SKT. And truthfully, it was a phenomenal tournament from them. They dropped the very first game to OMG all the way back in the groups. And you know, we, I, I was questioning, I was like, well, we'll see how it goes. But they just grew from there. In this grand final, uh, championship final, Royal <laughs> tried something new. We've seen some picks and ban strategies from them that I like in theory, but I don't know if I think pulling out new champions with those compositions in the championship final against this team is the right way to do it. Before I open this up to the table, I have to highlight Piglet. I have to talk about Piglet because he once again blew my mind. An 11.4 KDA on Corky and 5-0 and with 450 gold per minute. At this level of play, those statistics are phenomenal at this level of play. And you just, you, you cannot stop to, you know, crown his achievements. Yeah, and then Piglet was really good, but if we're gonna just dissect the games, we can basically start in the jungle because both junglers were really pivotal to the performance rather of both teams. Bengi, again, plays really well. Synergy with Impact, Synergy with Faker, mobility-centered jungling style works really well, and he plans ahead. Bengi knows what he's doing in his next two minutes. That guy has everything prepared. Never ever will you see Bengi walk somewhere and be like, Ah, that's not good, Daddy. Let's turn it around. Well, lucky sometimes. All credit to him. He's in the finals as well. Good player but not quite Bengi level because he was walking down river quite a few times, turned around, changed his mind. He was more of a band-aid jungle, trying to help out where he can. And he did look especially indecisive in that last yes. game as well, especially with his ganks on mid. You could really tell that the synergy just wasn't quite up at the same level of SK Telecom. Yeah, you definitely have to shout out Bengi. He was a huge part to why they won the games. And I think that's also a huge part why Royal was banning Vi all three games. Because in the scrims, they've been so scared of Bengi uh, using that Vi and just coming to dominate the mid lane that they didn't want to let it through. Unfortunately, that meant they didn't have an answer for the Jax in the top lane, which got out of hand quick. But that wasn't even needed. I mean, if you see this Jarvan gangs coming, exactly. synchronizing any lane that's behind, hell, even Faker behind early in CS, doesn't matter. Bengi comes in, sweeps the lane, comes back again, focuses targets that lose their flash, so he keeps ganking the right targets. Really good jungler. Really, really good jungler. Let's move this one on just a little bit. And I know we were discussing, like, as the game was going on, the 2v1 lane setups and, and basically how the team strikes you. We actually seen, you know, 2v2 matchups in the earlier games, but we did see in that third game. What's your the thoughts? 2v1 in the third game just destroyed Royal. They started Kennen with a Doran's Blade. Kennen with a Doran's Blade cannot 2 vs 1 at all. That is 100% them looking for the 1 vs 1 matchup with that Jax. That was supposed to be their answer to Jax, but then not only did they get 2 vs 1, he also face checked the bush. And it was heartbreaking from there. And yeah. It, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, it, it's true. And that, that one mistake caused him to fall so far behind in lane that then it, it, it rippled out big time. It forced that lane swap up into the top lane, and then you had the six jacks versus the three cannon. It, it got bad. There's not really anyone else to blame, though. They didn't put in the work yeah. to do the invade to get the vision so that they can go for that one versus one matchup that they wanted. They just assumed it would be top lane for them. And at some point during all three games, they 2v2 against each other. And there's a reason why Piglet consistently <laughs> beat Uzi. Um, so all credit to Royal. They picked Vayne twice and Caitlyn once in the series, which is very uncharacteristic. Like, that's something that you would see in Korea all the time, Caitlyn and Vayne every game. And those are matchups that Piglet's really comfortable with. And not only that, but Tabe playing Sona all three games is really predictable. And I feel like everyone's used to playing against Sona. That's not a strong lane to, to, to a lot of people. And then... You saw multiple realms from Bengi and Faker, always 4v2 diving bottom lane, and that really is just what put them ahead of the, the enemy team. Although, if we would have had those 2v2 matchups in game one and three, this could have turned out entirely different, because World did a good job at, uh, at trying to get to the matchups, but they didn't have enough vision, and a lot of these times, I think 2v2 would have been the better option for Royal, especially last game you saw, once they actually swapped back, they were equal in levels, but uh, they were doing a lot better job dealing with the enemy bot lane, compared to they were, how they were handling their 2v1s. Yeah, one thing that really stands out for me from SKT's side as well is the fact that they almost took elements of OMG's playstyle, the tower daves, dives rather, the super early roams. You know, in game one, they had a 4v2 at I think like eight minutes. Game two, they did like a 3v1 mid lane on that cast and like super early on. It was something that I loved seeing SKT do because in my mind, that's what OMG were going to do in this final. And at the same time, OMG took something from Fnatic using the Teleport Cassidy, which was a good idea in theory, but they fell too far behind early game to actually show how it 
would actually work. But in theory, it's good. You know Fake is going to play Z. He knows he's going to go roaming. What do you do? You play a good mid laner that can jump around the map and teleport at the same time. Well, for the final point on the analyst desk, it wouldn't be fair to not let Monty get his say in. <laughs> As the conductor, talk to me a little bit. I know you had some thoughts. Your final closing message here about SKT and just how phenomenal they've played. Yeah, I, this is just... What a remarkable story from SK Telecom. Uh, I, uh, when Doe and I were casting them in Champions and they first showed up in spring with three players, and these are the players that we've been dropping the names of the most. Faker, mm -hmm. Bengi, Piglet. Never played on a professional team at a professional level before April. And they come in, and I had heard all this hype about Faker. Oh, Faker's been number one in Korean solo queue for a long time. Had never seen him play. And then the LeBlanc game happened, which was very infamous where he basically one man dismantled uh, MVP Blue. But to come from there, and you say, oh, these guys are great in lane, but they still have all these problems in their team fights, they still have all these rotational issues, and to fix them so quickly, and to come back in Champion Summer and take it, and they have just gone like a rocket. And I, it's just mind-blowing to me that we have such a new team, such a fresh team, with this level of synergy, with this level of play, you really have to hand it to... A rocket-powered train. Rocket-powered train, <laughs> there you go. I have to say, too, I'm very impressed with all the members because there's a lot of hype and talk about Faker, but every single member on that yeah. team does so much to come out with the victories. Grandpa, what happened to the ticket that Monty was going to be crying You know what, actually, I, I kind of kept mine, just in case. <laughs> I, as, Is this still as, redeemable? As, Can I still as, redeem this? Uh, I, you, no, 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 but I got, I got plenty more oh, for you. Oh, <laughs> I got one. <laughs> more. I got one. <laughs> But as, as Monty did not need something to uh, drench his tears in, I actually managed to salvage mine. If you, yeah, it's really hard to see, but a little tape goes a long way. Yeah. <laughs> a little tape goes a long way. Guys, thank you so much for actually chiming in. And thanks for listening to what we